Hello, hello. I hope you can hear me. Hello, everyone. Let's give everyone a second to jump on, and I do mean second, and then we're going to talk about breakfast. What is for breakfast? So let me make sure I'm live, as I always try to do, and then I want to share this video in my self health hero Facebook community. If you are a part of that community, then you will already know about this live, right? I'm not seeing it. Let me refresh. And um, and that's where I share all the goods. And you know, if anything's coming up or if you want to ask me questions, that's where I'm going to answer them. In fact, it's better to ask them in there versus ask me in like messenger or something because then you're not only helping yourself but you're helping other people that have the same question so if you don't know who i am i am jamie j miller functional diagnostic nutritionist uh nutrition practitioner and uh i help people deal with a lot of underlying struggles um from without using prescription medications um and things that actually are causing more harm than good. Let me stay really quickly. Okay, let me get this over here and try to do this really fast. So when you jump on, when you jump on, if you will just leave your, uh, you know, say hi, tell me what your normal breakfast is. What is your normal breakfast consume of? So I have pretty much the same thing every morning, and we'll talk about that. But I want to hear what you typically eat for breakfast every morning. And are you in a hurry when you eat it? Are you, like, running out the door? Do you have time to actually make yourself some breakfast? Or does it need to be on the go? Tell me what that is in the comments. And let me share this really quickly. Hey, again, I am sharing this in my self-health hero community. If you're a part of that community, um, this is where we, we actually talk and um, discuss these things and people ask me questions. Again, that's where I answer questions about functional diagnostic testing and all that it entails. I answer them in that group. It's a private group, but it's free. Um, and let me share this to them really quickly and then we'll get started. Okay, so breakfast and what it has to do with actual hormone balance. So the reason why breakfast is so crucial is because it's your first meal out of the day um, coming off a pretty much an all night fast. Um, it is absolutely crucial what you eat at the first meal of the day, okay? Actually what you drink, anything that you consume on the first meal of the day. And the reason being is because of what it can do to your blood sugars. So the typical American, um, especially female on the go, breakfast is like cereals or toast or oatmeal or pancakes or if you even have time to make pancakes, mainly muffins. If you're not pulling through a drive through for a combination of maybe an egg McMuffin or a donut or whatever, that's a typical American breakfast um, on the go. Um, this way of eating creates hormonal and metabolic catastrophic problems. And, um, and it may not, maybe in your earlier years you were able to get away with that, but maybe you're starting to experience, as I did after having the second baby, that it didn't matter what I ate, um, that my, my body was just erupting to a hot mess. And so this was one of the biggest things that I had to change. And it was what I consumed right out of the gates for breakfast. Now, let's talk about the reason why those type of breakfast breakfasts, <laughs> say that fast. So let's talk about why the reason why that type of breakfast is so hard on your system. And it is because of carbohydrates and sugar spikes. It's not that carbs are bad because even vegetables are are carbs or mostly carbs, but it is the type of carbs that you're consuming and the and the relationship that it has to your blood sugar levels. Those blood sugar levels are what, and then the fact that they're spiking causes such major issues on your hormones, on your adrenals, on your energy levels, and we could go on and on and on. So when you eat something sugary or a high, you know, quick absorbing carbohydrate, pancakes, toast, um, muffins for breakfast, what it does is it causes a sugar spike in your system. So coming down from that can cause a multitude of symptoms. 
one of them being hormonal imbalance, but the other being like you have mood swings and then you have a really drop in energy. This isn't anything new. This is where you people see people that get hangry, you know, they, and then what, but the problem is, is it causes the body to start to want to crave something else, highly carbohydrate, carbohydrate, um, highly sugary. And so then the cycle begins. So then you grab something else that's in high in carbohydrates, or you'll grab a Coke, or you'll grab more coffee, or something to give you that more, that boost that you're looking for, that you started the cycle on when you had a poor choice of breakfast that morning. Um, again, you could have been just running late or whatever. It doesn't really matter why you chose that breakfast. It matters that you chose that breakfast and that it is causing a sugar spike. And then obviously what goes up must come down. And so from that coming down, the body begins to want to crave a quick uh, way to get back up there, which would be, again, starting the cycle over and over and over again. So this isn't really anything new, but what I will say is that we're starting to see um, more and more struggles and and the the um, the effect that it has on the actual adrenals. And now you hear more people talk about, oh, I have adrenal fatigue. Oh, I have adrenal fatigue. Oh, I have adrenal fatigue. Well, I'm here to say that if you're not willing to change your actual breakfast, then you are going to continue to have adrenal fatigue. Because when your blood sugar spikes, it actually causes a literal stress on the body. When that your body gets stressed out, uh, very similar to if somebody were to punch you in the face or very similar if somebody were to pull out in front of you in your car, very similar if somebody were to tell you to calm down when you don't feel like calming down. It's the same thing. Um, your stressors go up. You may not feel it. You may not realize it. But when your blood sugar spikes, it is a, your body reacts as if someone has literally punched you in the face. The fight or flight mechanism ignites. When this happens... That is your adrenals because not only do they regulate cortisol, but they also regulate your blood sugars. So, um, so your adrenals get, kick in and they start working because they're like the body's stressed, the blood sugar's high, we've got to get it back down, produce more cortisol. And you guys know exactly what happens when you produce more cortisol and what happens when you have more cortisol regulation in the body, insulin regulation, you get more fat accumulation, your body... Um, um, holds on to weight, um, but then uh, also it disrupts your hormonal balance every single time. So the more that you do that, then eventually the adrenals get to the point where they get um, they don't do start doing it adequately, adequately, or your hormones get so imbalanced that you have what what comes out as adrenal fatigue. It's not really that your adrenals are not doing their job. It's just that they can't do their job enough because you're not helping them out with the foods that you're eating and you're constantly in a blood sugar spike. Now, I will say too, this also goes for coffee on an empty stomach first thing in the morning will cause a blood sugar spike. And yes, that's coffee without sugar as well um, or any type of extras in it. It could be black coffee, but it causes a blood sugar spike as well. So the best thing to do for coffee, because I'm not one to say that you need to eliminate coffee, is to eat your breakfast. We'll talk about what that type of breakfast is in a second and then have your coffee, you know, directly after or during or whatever so that you get a good balanced um, sh uh, blood sugar uh, regulation from your meal. Now a lot of people say well when I do that I don't feel the effects from the coffee and actually what you're not feeling the effects from you're not feeling the effects from the caffeine in the coffee you're feeling the effects from the blood sugar spiking so um, it's not the caffeine so the caffeine is going to work whether you have food in your stomach or not you're feeling the effects from the blood sugar spike and we want to eliminate those because those are the things that are holding you back those are the things that are allowing you to um, not be able to lose weight adequately those are the things that are causing your hormones to balance your thyroid to be off and your adrenals to be fatigued. So you can eliminate that by having a well-rounded breakfast. Again, I will tell you an example of that in a second. But I will say, thirdly, I will say that breakfast and the clients that I work with that deal with major insomnia struggles, I can usually tie it back to their breakfast every single time. So if they're not having a good solid breakfast of protein, fats, and fibers, and we'll talk more about that in a second, if they're not having a good solid breakfast of that, if they're getting up in the morning and they're having their coffee and then they're waiting to have their, you know, a breakfast and it's, again, a carb breakfast like toast, um, fruit, bars, oatmeal. Again, it's not about the carbs, it's about the sugar. That if they're having that first thing in the morning um, or even a few hours after their coffee, when their coffee's already caused the, caused the blood sugar spike, then you're going to have 
poor sleep at night. And yes, it does affect you through the whole entire day and well into the night and can cause that mid evening or in the middle of the night wake up call like at 2 a.m. in the morning when you're constantly waking up and you're like, I don't know why I can't sleep. Again, you can usually tie it to blood sugar levels, which are directly related to what you do right out of the gates in the morning when you wake up. Okay, so I've already given you a little bit of a hint of how to help this, and that is tip number one, to have protein, fiber, and um, fat in your breakfast. So a good example of this was the picture that I used to post about um, this video coming up, which was um, a good whole grain source of bread. Um, usually do something gluten-free if you need to, um, and then an avocado and an egg. Protein, fiber, and um, fat. You want to have that for every single meal. Now, a lot of people hear protein and they think, um, well, let's do, uh, let's do, uh, let me take that off there. Let's do protein shakes. Absolutely not. You want to, in the first meal of the day, you want to 100% do a whole food. What You know, a food that actually you have to eat and um, digest and consume and get your body going in that way throughout the day. Now, if you wanted to do a protein shake for lunch, then then fine. Then do that for lunch, and then maybe have a sensible dinner. Um, I used to be one of those people that said, you know, if you can't if you can't make get the meal done, then do a protein shake. And I no longer say that. I hardly ever do protein shakes anymore. Um, I only do them when you know. Usually, if it's a post workout protein shake, and that's to help with recovery. So. Um, I don't do them as a meal replacements anymore because, again, all that I've experienced and all that I've learned and all that I've seen with my clients, it's still disrupting their hormone imbalance. Um, and they need fat, they need protein, and they need fiber with those meals. So um, I have a recipe for a good protein shake or a protein smoothie, but that doesn't rely heavily on, um, doesn't rely heavily on, uh, goodness, on the protein powder. It has other components in it that helps regulate your hormones. So if you would like that recipe, I will post it in the comments below after this video is over. Um, let's see, tip number two and the final one, you do wanna be intentional about your breakfast. Instead of scarping it down, get up a little bit earlier and try to get in a good wholesome breakfast. Eat your food slower. You know, it is people do not realize how much this affects um, your brain to body connection by eating your food slower, chewing it up and, um, you know, and really letting it, your brain connect with what it's eating and what it wants to do with those nutrients, um, makes a really big deal about your hormonal balance and how much stress that food as it's being digested is going to cause on the body. Because again, I want you to hear what I'm saying is that any hormonal imbalances is directly related to the stress. And most people think stress as an external thing, but it's not necessarily, it is an internal thing. So you could be having, you could have some things going on internally that's causing those stress. Parasites, blood sugar dysregulation, um, hormonal imbalances, all these things cause stress inside the body. And therefore, the, as the body is reacting to that, it's going to cause more imbalances, which then cause more stress, which cause more imbalances, which then cause more stress. And then you have this vicious cycle. But one of the ways to help this cycle is to be very cognizant of the amount of protein, the amount of fat, and the amount of fiber that are in your breakfasts. Now, with my clients, I try to give them options and recipes and things like that. Um, so you'd want to, um, again, I'll put a recipe in the comments below, but again, I, I want you guys to understand that it is a choice. It is a choice to make time to do this. And it's not easy for me. I get up at 4.30 in the morning and then I'm at the gym and so I have to make it happen at the gym. So I get that mornings are a struggle. But you got into the habit of just getting up and drinking coffee and going about your business and not eating. And now you are fatigued and you're tired and you have insomnia and you have hormonal imbalances and you're trying to lose weight and you can't. Um, this would be a good place to start. So put this in check. And um, again, a protein, a fiber, and a fat in the morning for breakfast. You can do it in advance. Um, there's some really great recipes out there for different types of porridges or, or um, and that have... You know, you want to think outside of the box. And one of the ways to do that is to think of dinner foods for breakfast. Have a hamburger patty for breakfast. Have a turkey patty for breakfast. Have a big piece of um, organic sausage for breakfast. Bacon is great. Um, 
Protein is amazing, and it does amazing things for your body, your blood sugar issues, and your hormones, and your detox detoxification pathways. So, okay, that's all I've got for you today. Um, comment below if you if you have a, a breakfast that you enjoy every morning. And um, yeah, that's all I got. Peace out.